Hashtag smallmouth are the enemy. Make it go viral. <laughs> Growing up on the water with fishing in their blood, Matt Airy and Brian Thrift have spent the last 10 years competing against the biggest names in professional bass fishing. Their success has landed them ranked among the top anglers in the world. If you're looking to become a better angler, then this show has all the answers. Join us and follow along to get actionable tips, tactics, and tried and true techniques directly from the pros. Welcome to Let's Talk Fish. Go ahead and start. Hey, we're back. <laughs> it's been what? Two months? Three months? Maybe? It's been a while. I don't know. It's been a while. Anyways, a lot a of while. things have happened. There's no S on the end of anyways. It, there is when I say it. <laughs> anyways. My anyways. mom would be mad. My mom was anyways. an English major. She'd be mad right anyways. now. Anyways. Anyway. Anyway. Anyways. Anyways sounds better because there could be more than one way. <laughs> There's always more than one way. Your mic's sagging over a little bit. Well, if I put it up any higher, this thing's in my way. I'm trying to see if we... Can y'all hear us? Mic check. Well, I hope they can hear us. I see the little sound bar going yeah. up and down, up and down, up and down. My, my, I was testing on my AirPods, and I couldn't hear anything. All so, right. So we may have a few technical difficulties tonight. No, I don't, we don't. I think we're good. <laughs> I just couldn't hear. I was what are, what are you doing, Matt? He's been huh? looking for something like 20 What are you minutes. doing? I'm trying to pull up our feed right now. What were you doing? I was reading something. Uh-huh. Trying to learn how to catch a smallmouth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, in in our absence, um, neither one of us can remember how to catch a smallmouth. I caught a few at Champlain. No, we already talked about that. I didn't catch crap at St. Cla- St. Clair. <laughs> so, Matt's last smallmouth tournament didn't go so well. My last smallmouth tournament didn't go Anyways, <laughs> so, huh? It didn't go anyways. Yeah, it didn't go anyways. Any anywhere, anyways. I don't know. All uh, right, I think I got us pulled up now. I'm trying to pull it up best I can, y'all. It's just it, this thing's whooping me tonight. Hey, oh, there it is. It works. Hey, he's got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we here. We're here, and we're ready. I Maybe. Thought, yeah. <laughs> so if you notice the the topic tonight was what was it, Jeff? Hashtag smallmouth small are the enemy. Oh, smallmouth are the enemy, or yes. they suck. Either one. <laughs> um, smallmouth. Brian and I were talking before the show, and you know, we've either it's it's been like a home run for us when we go smallmouth fishing, or that's true. Like we have, like it's our first time ever fishing, or something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't really have an excuse for that or a reason for that. Um, I do know Saint Clair is a very unique animal, and I don't compare it to any other smallmouth fishery up north. And here's why. Because St. Clair is like Okeechobee, but with nothing but smallmouth in it. Yes, and lots of them. S- similar? Is that a similar Yeah, that's, that's, that's a very good comparison. And meaning that you can put your boat in at St. Clair Metro Park, where we went out of for the elite tournament, and you go out and you hit the hit the lake, and it's, what, 10 or 12 feet deep right there? Yeah. And you go, like, two miles, and it's 13 feet deep. And then you go another mile, <laughs> and it's, like, 15 feet deep. Yes. So it's like a featureless bowl of water with some sand, lots of sand, and mixed cabbage grass and other types of little grass that doesn't grow very high off the bottom. See, I like it like that. I think that's like St. Clair. I've only been there once. I think I finished third. But it I bet was, you do like it. Yeah, I like it for that reason because it's it's like finding a needle in a haystack, and I like that. It is, but they move. They yeah. move. Oh, lot. yeah. They follow the bait. <laughs> that, that's, the, that's the whole thing about St. Clair is I, I think structure plays very little into the picture at st Clair. it's all about you know where there's a crawfish hatch where the perch are where it's there's a food. some kind of little bug hatch or something like that and and you got to stay with them where they go i mean clinton they're not going to move a couple of miles in a day but they do move clinton manning said i mustache you a question thrift go ahead <laughs> go ahead we are uh we're going <laughs> to chat a little bit about the smallmouth events i know um sturgeon bay uh, I know that was a tough event for you. St. Clair was a tough event for me. Uh, last two times I had been to St. Clair, I had a couple really strong finishes. Yeah, you did real good last well, year was, when y'all ended that. Yeah, year. I was really, really disappointed. So, Bo Adams has a question for you real quick. I know we don't want to take questions this early, but well, I don't see thanks, the, Jeff, I don't for, see the captions on your phone anymore, so you must have figured out how to turn them off. Did you turn them off on my phone? I haven't. I haven't no, he said that. he got it figured out. 
No, uh, yes, I figured. All right, it cool, out. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no. Bo said he has wife's his captions on. There's just him. I was like, I don't know. Matt used to have them. Wait, how do they know my captions aren't on my phone? What? what? <laughs> you said how did do... I see them and it's not on there? So I was gonna get you to tell him how you turned them off. <laughs> you just go to the uh, settings and go to caption features and and turn the little tab to off. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> what? That's a good answer. Oh. Okay, sounded good anyway. <laughs> I don't even see Bo's comment on here. Maybe my phone's all it's jacked down up. at the bottom. I'm not seeing comments at all roll in. I got so all, we'll just touch on I Stephen Guthrie's kind of, comment. I got knows technology like yeah, he knows smallmouth. You're behind. You're behind. You're Jeff's got jokes. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm not the only one sitting here that hadn't caught, been able to catch a smallmouth. I had not a smallmouth in years. <laughs> I had one smallmouth. Have you ever caught a smallmouth? Nah. All right, enough said. Yeah, only one. So we're all in the same boat. Now finished almost last. Correct. Um, I had a pretty even season though. Now that my last. season's over. Uh, we uh, okay. Robbie said you're a bit difficult to hear, so you're gonna need to speak bit up difficult? Or, or turn your mic up. <laughs> Where's that? How long ago? So I just turned it up. Uh, about five comments ago. Yeah, I've already handled that. I'm confused. So I've come home and um, I thought all the on the drive home I was watching Bass Live and and it kind of I had to turn it off and here's why. And I never turned Bass Live off. <laughs> but it was to the point to where they were throwing back so many fish that I could have used <laughs> when I was fishing the tournament. I got mad. And I said, that's it. I can't. I mean, the Johnston brothers are out there just, oh, it's another little old 310. It's <laughs> yeah. another little old 38. Oh, he's just a little, he's a little guy. He's a 39. He's a 312. I, I'll be honest with y'all. So I actually was kind of excited going into this tournament. My practice wasn't that great from a quality standpoint. I had one day where I had like 22 pounds, but it was so random. It was Yeah, ridiculous. which it often is. Yeah. Think. And I found a couple schools, and I found them in like 12 feet of water. Yeah. And I found them by just fishing. Right. And you could not see these fish on your side imaging. You could not see these fish on your down imaging. So when I found them, I was pretty excited. And I caught a couple three-and-a-half-pounders and a couple two-and-a-half-pounders two two really quick in both of them. And there were multiple fish chasing my other fish that I had hooked. And I, I left them alone. There wasn't nobody around. And I, I rolled up there the first day. And I literally caught the first day and the second day of the tournament, which is obviously the only two days I got to fish, uh, <laughs> I caught – well over a hundred smallmouth. That's a lot of smallmouth. And I never caught a fish bigger than three four. And That's I probably caught sixty between two eight and three even. And I was talking to one of my buddies that lives up there after the tournament will drive home and I said, Can you explain that to me, please? Because Obviously, I was a little shallower than everybody else was catching the big ones. Right. And I, and I knew I had had a couple random big bites out there deep during the tournament. I mean, during practice. But I thought when I could, if you could, I was thinking fighter last year. Yeah. Like, like 25 pounds. Well, I didn't, I wasn't thinking that. I was thinking I could catch me 17 or 18 and then run out there and drift around aimlessly and hope to run into yeah, a Yeah, might get up to 21 or right, 20. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and when they just kept biting and, and you're catching like two tens and two twelves and two eights. You're thinking, well, I'm going to catch a four in a minute. Yeah. You know, and that didn't happen for me. I don't have a reason why. I don't have even a, uh, I mean, I have no idea why there was not any bigger fish up there because there were some really big fish caught in the 10 to 14 foot range. Oh, yeah. Which made even less sense to me. So, um, I don't know, dude. I, I just I just missed the boat. And here's, here's the problem. <laughs> when I rolled up on my first place the first day, I was about 71 out of 85 guys. Yeah. I rolled up there and there wasn't a boat in sight. You thought, and I'm oh, like, man. I'm fixing to wreck them. And I stood up and I caught 30 or 40 fish <laughs> in like two hours. And I'm looking around and still in a boat and I'm sitting there with about 13 pounds in the box. And I'm like, yeah, I've screwed up. Yeah. Yeah, this ain't, this ain't. So good. did you go somewhere else or did you? Stay? I went to my next school oh, okay. and caught about 30 more. And, and I had, a, I called time. up to 15 pounds. Oh, I got you. Got you. <laughs> yeah, I caught like a three, four there. So hey, yeah, hey. it was a big one. <laughs> and, uh, then I went out there and I drifted around and and uh, anyway I, it was a, man I was riding the struggle I was driving the struggle bus all week and practice wasn't that great and Canterbury and I were just we walked away from that tournament we've had both had good finishes there before going just scratching our heads man and uh, you know sometimes sometimes you think you got it figured out and you think and, and sometimes you, you think you still you still walk away from the tournament <laughs> saying where did I really go wrong because. When you catch that many smallmouth on St. Clair, the odds are you're going to have some four-pounders. Right. You exactly. know, or some four-and-a-halves or a five. Um, 
and and what's cool about St. Clair is you can catch them anywhere on the lake. I mean, if you you can if yeah. you watched any of the live feed or anything, I mean, Jay Ellis was catching them on a chatterbait in four or five feet of water. That was got, interesting. Yeah, you got guys fishing the river, sight fishing some, fishing breaks, and then. You, I mean, you've got a little bit of everything, so there's a lot of options out there on it, on that lake, even though Canada, Canada was off limits. Well, so my buddy that I talked to on the drive home actually lives in on the Canadian side of St. Clair. Yeah. Not too far from the Bell River. And I was asking, I said, man, you know, there were some mega schools over there on the U.S. side, and I just I wanted to know how the Canadian side was fishing, comparatively speaking. And he said, well, it's been funny because, you know, the fish have been really, really scattered over there, too. Oh, really? And we were just all assuming because you always think the grass is greener on the other side. Oh, yeah. We're always. assuming because we can't go to Canadian water that that's where the gold is, you yeah. know? And then and then these guys go off and catch, like, how many guys broke 80 pounds, like six guys or something? Yeah. And you're like, oh, well, it was really right under my nose. I just never <laughs> found it. Um, so, yeah, yeah it you was You should have just put the trolling motor down and did pretty good, probably. See, and that, you know what? You're 100% yeah. true. You can go out of Metro Park if you if you can stand it. I don't know many people that can stand this and not get run over, and not get run over. Yeah. Well, after about eleven o'clock, you better watch. Yeah, out. you got to go. Um, <laughs> you could drop your trolling motor. Well, really, you probably don't even have to drop your trolling motor. You could throw a drop shot out or Carolina rig or whatever, something, and not ever pick your trolling motor up, and you're going to catch some fish. Oh yeah. And nobody's here to say that you're not going to catch twenty something pounds either. Oh, I guarantee. The the couple five pounders that I caught in practice were all by themselves in the middle of nowhere and so far apart from each other it wasn't even funny. <laughs> and I, I, you know how I caught them? I was just drifting, covering water, you know, just randomly covering water. And when I caught, you know, I catch one, you get excited and you turn around and you zigzag and you figure out yeah, there, you know, graph it and all that stuff, and then you don't get another bite. And you're like, oh, cool, awesome. Yeah. And then you do it again, and then <laughs> and then you're like, well, that sucks. So. uh yeah, I don't. I don't know, man. St. Clair's a puzzle. It's almost like Okeechobee to me. It's 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 always, I, it's a crapshoot. You know, I I don't. Uh, I I get why, how a lot of those guys caught their fish off their electronics, and some of the guys were just absolutely abusing them. And it was a uh, it was very impressive to me. Uh, and uh, you know, I, I I I did learn a lot. We learn something every time we go out. I learned a lot. Oh, so yeah. I, I'm I'm looking forward to going back to St. Clair. We will go back to St. Clair again in the future. And uh, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get my revenge because because that, that pretty much sucked for lack of a better term. Um, you want to talk about Sturgeon Bay a little bit because I know the FLW deal is going on up there right yeah, now too. Yeah, so the the FLW championship. I don't. I'm not sure what they're calling it. I really don't know. The title. The title. FLW title is going on right now at Sturgeon Bay. I think today was uh, Group B's first day fishing. Group A fish yesterday. And I know yesterday um, it was it was pretty good from the top standpoint. I think Kurt Mitchell had like over a hundred pounds of fish the the first day. Yeah, um, that's pretty impressive. That's that's ridiculous, and that's that's kind of what happened when I was there for stage five of the BPT. Um, pretty much everybody in the field caught a hundred pounds a day, except for me. And it, it was kind of it was it was weird. I don't know how to explain it because. I try to get away from everybody and go do my own thing, try to find some something to myself. Kind of like Matt was talking about at St. Clair. He, yeah, he I'm the same place. way, dude. I can't stand so fishing in the crowd. I found a large group of fish up shallow in like six, five, six feet of water. And the last day of practice, I went in there to check them, see if they're still there. And there's like 300 bass swimming around in this one little bay. Like, see them? Oh, yeah. They're everywhere. It's oh. like... This, they're just i'm trolling through there just not even casting just hold my rod looking and there goes a four there goes three three and a half so there goes a five just fish swimming everywhere and it's over on the michigan side of the lake i'm thinking oh i'm good there ain't nobody gonna be here there ain't gonna be bad crowded so first day of the event i roll over there we can trailer because of rough weather mlf's got a policy you can trailer to another public ramp if you want to so you can be closer to where you're going to go and not have to beat your boat now, up can and beat you do yourself that anytime up. if it's if they enforce it they've got that rule written we've got the they trailer have to policy say, okay this is allowed <clears throat> yes it okay. will be either determined than usually determined the night before gotcha they uh, have a trailering policy wrote into the rules that if it's inclement weather 
we can trailer to another we can only leave we still have to pick up our officials at the designated terminant ramp but we can trailer to another ramp to launch and all the four lines in i don't know what i did but it started back sorry continue brian this is just weird so uh, so we crazy. had the trailer in policy and i go to the ramp i'm going to put in and there's four guys putting in there it's me jordan lee hackney and Alton jones jr and i'm thinking oh we got this whole side of the lake to the four of us we we fixing all four smoke them i don't know what happened i went in this bay and i have yet to see a bass i've yet to catch a bass so at the end of the first period you know lines are out i'm like i hadn't caught a bass i'm like what in the world's going on so i look at the score tracker jordan lee hadn't caught a bass hackney hadn't caught a bass and Alton jones had, jr has not <laughs> caught a bass so the four of us that put in over there have not caught a bass in the first period and what's my hard-headed self do oh i'll find them the next period so i go the next period and i fish an hour still haven't seen a bass i go put it on the trailer and by this time, Jordan Lee's already caught 100 pounds. I'm like, dang, he must have found them over here. I said, I don't care. I'm going somewhere else. So I put it on the trailer, go to another ramp, see Jordan Lee's truck there. It's like, well, Jordan Lee came over here earlier than me, so maybe they're biting on this side. Well, I crank up and run out to the place I'm going to start. Jordan Lee's sitting on it, just raping nature. And I can't, I, nature. I can't do nothing. You know, I was like, going to say T-shirt idea, but then I thought about it. No, I, don't think that, I don't think that would, so anyway, I think that would go. That's, I mean, that's the only term I got for what I witnessed. I don't know what else to say. Raping nature. If anybody can describe it better, be I'm, I'm open ears. It's got to be a shirt. It's <laughs> got to be a so shirt. So anyway, I watched him catch them, and I didn't catch nothing, and that's pretty much the – the way Sturgeon Bay went for myself. <laughs> <clears throat> well, um, Tom Skidmore said it's interesting because I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna address this question. He, and it was well, not a question; it was a statement. He said, "Smallmouth group and size groups. What I've experienced on Erie threes live with threes, so find fours. Fours should have fours, and so on and so forth." Well, if you watched any of Bass Live on Sunday, St. Clair is 100 percent not like Erie apparently, <laughs> because the Johnston brothers, along with like 12 other boats. I mean, it looked like a merry-go-round on this spot, dude. I rode by Oh, they every all day. caught them on one little... Well, like, LaHue, the Johnston brothers, three or four of the top 10 were, but like 10 of the top 20 were yeah. in this spot, you know? So, it was like, I think Fighter was there too. They were all... Dude, and I can't fish like that. Like, obviously, I paid the ultimate yeah, price. Yeah, I can't do but that But I can't either. do it. And... They're all like, I mean, it, literally, they're all like facing each other, dude, and and it's just, and just it's insane. Everybody's jacking. And they're catching, but to address Tom's statement, um, and in Erie, they may very well hold true to that, but they're catching. But usually at Erie, they get on some type of structure, right? Yeah, so they're actually relating to something, so it's pretty, you know, like a boulder, or a rock pile, or a shoal, or something like that. But these fish, because kind of what Brian addressed earlier, and Zona said this on Bass Live, and it, and it's. 100 percent accurate for st Clair, and it's one of the only lakes that's like that because it's all sand and scattered grass there's not like specific areas that they sit in um there's certain areas they might sit in in order to feed better in that particular area like it might be a hole in the grass or a bare bottom or something like that yeah. but when they go into an area they eat everything that's there and then they move to the next area and, and then they eat. eat everything that's there <laughs> and then they moved to the next, and then they, and that's what they do on St. Clair. And these guys that were catching them, obviously it was just a mega, mega, mega school. Yeah. And, but back to Tom's statement. And they were mostly drop shot and stuff. 90% drop yeah. shot. Yeah. There's some guys catching a few on the Carolina rig and things like that, but. Even Crank, Cox, I didn't see the crankbait play as much this year. It must not have cooled off and wasn't late I think, enough. I think in that the was year. the deal. There, there were a lot of. I caught a lot of fish cranking, and obviously not the right ones, but I caught a lot of fish cranking. There were a lot of fish caught cranking, and there was a few key fish caught cranking, but it seemed like soft plastics was the way to go. Yeah. Um, one thing about that place is those fish, they were catching pound and a half or four pounder, two pounder, three pounder, two and uh, a half, four and a half, five. Two. Yeah. I mean, dude, it was all day long and all different sizes of fish. It was just so many fish in that area. It was insane. And, you know, I'll tell you something even dumber. <laughs> Canterbury <laughs> and myself both drifted right through that school in practice, really close to it, close enough to get a bite or two. Neither one of us ever had a bite in it. 
Were they drifting it or were they? No, they were specifically fishing a spot, but dude, it was a pretty big spot. Yeah. Like it was the size of three So they were spot locked, just fan casting around. Just, yeah, catching them off their electronics. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. And, and it was a big, big, big school of fish. I mean, for those guys to catch, for like three guys to catch 80 pounds out of one yeah, school for pretty, four that's days, pretty good. Like, along that's with all the good. other fish that were caught, I mean, that's a. That's a mega school of smallmouth. Yeah, that is a um, big school of smallmouth. Anyway, but yeah, I could see Erie is definitely, and, and I've talked to Pipkins about this and some other guys, Erie fish is a lot different than St. Clair. Um, it is a more target-rich environment, yeah. wouldn't you say? Um, the forage is probably pretty much the same, but they don't roam around in giant schools and just keep moving all the time. Yeah, and I don't think it's got the population St. Clair. I got. agree 100%. Because I know the, the times I've been to Erie, like a good day for me on Erie is – eight or nine bites all day right and yep. if you get eight or nine bites on erie normally you've got 19 to 20 couple pounds right i mean that's a good day on erie and st Clair, like matt said i mean he was catching 60 70 fish a day it sounds like so yeah, i mean st Clair's is just a different animal i guess it's the the way it's laid out being shallower with as much grass and as much bait as it's got it can hold a support a lot more fish than most places <laughs> for now you know one thing i noticed about st Clair that the size is still in there but and it may be the time of the year um a lot of the fish that were caught a lot of fish that i caught <laughs> were not really really heavy they weren't really square but yeah i don't should, know what y'all laughing might have at come I'm, up with a different term <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm missing it i'm missing it i'm missing it i'm missing it I, well i was looking back at it somebody asked me Oh, That's Gabe. What I'm at. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that is pretty funny. Um, Gabe Montgomery won't know if I'm going to. I will be at the I've, Toyota Owners I've coined tournament. a new term. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need uh, to go ahead and trademark that. Trade, you're going to go ahead and trademark <laughs> that one. So, Gabe, I will be at it. It was. It is September 19th through 20th. If you hadn't signed up for that event and you're a Toyota owner, be sure to do it. It is a free event. Just like every year, this is the ninth annual, if I'm not mistaken, Toyota Owners Tournament. And uh, you can go Where's online. It at it's at Pickwick again. Oh, okay. September 19th to the 20th. Free entry fee, $5,000 guaranteed first place. The top 30 boats get paid, guaranteed a paycheck. I think 30th place is around, around $150, somewhere in there. Uh, but like I said, it's free entry fee to anybody that's Toyota eligible. And the first 200 people that sign up get several hundred dollars each of toyota swag so it's a pretty awesome tournament everybody gets a meal um i believe if it's like last year mercer was there doing the mc in the way in uh, all the toyota pros will be there uh, as far as i know i think all of them will be there but it's a good time everybody uh, if you get a chance to come out to, to pickwick on september 19th and 20th uh emily's actually going to get to join me it's going to be like a little oh, mini really? vacation oh that'll be good year. so um, that'll be good. yeah we're gonna uh, we're gonna go down and, and hang out with everybody and have a good time um all right, Joey Randall asks, what's the best smallmouth fishing in North Carolina? If you're not in a river in the west somewhere, probably James, wouldn't you say? Like, if you're wanting to target smallmouth. Yeah, yeah. if you want to get bites, I'd say Lake James. But I think there's bigger fish in Joe Cassie. It's mostly in South Carolina, technically, but some of it's in North Carolina. Yeah, okay. I forgot about Joe Cassie. And actually, I didn't even realize if that was uh, – I didn't even realize that was in North Carolina. I thought that was a South Carolina lake, but – no, it's, it's like just a little bit, yeah. Okay. Um, 80, 20. <laughs> 80 in north or? South. Okay. That's why I thought it was in South Carolina. Um, but some of the rivers, like the Broad River, it's really good fishing for smallmouth. If y'all have any questions about catching smallmouth, don't ask us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, no, I'm kidding. We, we, we know how to get bit by a smallmouth. Yeah. We just didn't collide with the right ones. Right. I mean, that's, that's the way. Both of us have. I've made several top tens. Heck, I, I won one at Champlain last year on smallmouth. You but, caught some largies too, didn't you? Yeah, I caught, caught mostly largemouth, but there was a couple smallmouth in there, so it counts. It, so it, counts. <laughs> it counts. I caught a, a four-pound smallmouth with five minutes to go that won the tournament for me. So that counts as a smallmouth tournament. We got uh, – <laughs> We got a um, a special. We'll be back next week in the studio. We got two weeks in a row. We'll be here in the studio doing a show. Um, got a very special guest coming in next week, and a special announcement oh, next week, yeah, and a special time, giveaway next week. Time um, just got on. Here. We we won't we won't spoil it right now, but everybody be sure to tune oh, in next week. It's gonna sorry. be a lot of fun. He won't um, let me talk about it, Todd. I'm sorry. I didn't say you couldn't. I just said I it'd just be, said be a lot more fun with him here. Week. I agree. Hundred um, percent. Needed a flatworm. Sammy Moore. Do you actually think neither one of us had flatworms in our boat? 
when we were I had flatworms. Yeah, I had flatworms too. Yeah, yeah. we had flatworms. Trust me, we had flatworms. My trouble (laughs) is, I'm gonna tell you my trouble with smallmouth, especially the first of July. (laughs) I don't want to shake nothing and just sit there and hold a rod. I want to be throwing a jerk bait, cranking, top water, something cool. They will not bite anything cool anymore. That's you hence can, the reason for the hashtag smallmouth of the enemy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, somebody did, you know, I made a post the other day. I was, I got home and I was trying to, uh, to get uh, caught up on some tractor work at the house in Bush Hogan. And I posted a picture because I had my hat on that you gave me that has the, the, it actually looks like a green striper, oh, the bass? <laughs> but it yeah. says bass on it. Yeah. And I said I had to put my thinking cap on and go get on the tractor so I could try to figure out what when the wheels fell off last week at St. Clair. And somebody responded and said, you should have been throwing the flatworm or something. And I'm like, dude, do you really think any <laughs> any professional angler that was fishing up north in the past month didn't have a boat full? I'm not really right. smart. At it. Like, I'm just saying, like, we all had flatworms. It's not a cure-all, but it catches them. <laughs> but we all had flatworms. And if you want some, you can probably buy a bag on eBay right now for $100. I'm going to tell you the whole key to catching smallmouth. This is the end-all, be-all right here. End-all, be-all. <laughs> there have to be smallmouth there to catch them. That's, I'd say that's accurate. Yes. 100%. That, I, I that's have, the key. I have seen situations. Don't let don't let all this all this this stuff brainwash everybody. But Brian's a hundred percent right. I mean, <laughs> dude, if you catch a smallmouth and he's in a feeding mood, you could just about put a hot dog wiener on a drop shot and catch him. I mean, I'm serious. I mean, I, I mean, is that not fairly accurate? Occasionally, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not talking about northern smallmouth now. Our smallmouth around yeah, here, no, no. Different. But I, I've seen northern smallmouth kind of get finicky when they're up shallow if they're pressured, but. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize Cox was leading the FLW. Yeah, title. I think he's leading. Today. Well, now, now wait a minute. So, well, his he's leading his group. <laughs> all right. B. So it's MLF format for the FLW title. Right. Correct. Correct. <laughs> if I don't get all these terms right, no, you're, you're, you're right. All so right. it's it's the FLW title, but MLF they're fishing format. under the MLF format, meaning there's two groups, just two like groups. y'all fish. Yep. There's an A and a B. And I'm not sure how the numbers break down. Yeah, because it's only the like number. 50 guys or something, right? Yeah. So the top so many from Group A and Group B. All right. Well, let's start at the beginning. So Group A fished yesterday. Group B fished today. Then Group A will fish again tomorrow. And Group B will fish the day after tomorrow. And then whoever, whatever percentage. But, ha- but how many, I was going to say, how many guys? I, so I'm confused. I don't on how know many the, make the numbers. Cut. I don't know that exact number. I right? feel like it's the top 10 from each group because and it is, it's a smaller group. It's very possible. Okay. It's very possible. So they'll take the top guys from group A and group B and put them together for the third competition day. And then they'll take the top guys from that for the championship round day or okay. title day, I guess it's called. Title Makes day. perfect sense. Title day. Okay. Yeah. I hope everybody it, got It's that. a cool format. Like, I, <laughs> I, I, I sitting there watching yesterday and today, and all I'm thinking about is, you know, I know what these guys are going through because this was my first year fishing MLF, and I got my first taste of it at Ufala, just how, how fast-paced it is and knowing what everybody's got, what the different things you're thinking in your head about how you need to play this game because it is a different format. And I, I can just – watching i can see the guys and see them going through the same stuff i went through and it's pretty cool because it is a fun format um so i didn't realize see last time i checked today dylan hayes was leading but apparently cox took over the lead yeah. and is leading and that, uh, cox that did not even group. practice he True. went straight from st Clair to sturgeon bay and is now leading it that cox is an aminal he's just he an aminal he is um, That's insane. He's up there raping nature. Sorry, I had to say it. <laughs> I knew, I knew you were going to. Uh, I knew it. They, they, Sammy Moore said, "Need to sell those uh, flatworms now. They're going for eighteen dollars a bag now on eBay." Ooh. So I've got quite a few packs. I might be listing some flatworms later. Sitting on, on some, sitting on a little gold mine. <laughs> you got to bet Jeff's going to look to see if he's got any flatworms <laughs> at the back of the, the office here. Um, that's right, uh, Clarence Belcher. You got to have. Oh, Jody, uh, Jody from Catcher Lures. He's on. What's up, Jody? He said. He said he'll be glad not to watch any smallmouth tournaments on live this year. You know, I was kind of debating with somebody. I mean, I like I like to see fish caught. I like to see big fish caught, and 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 that never gets old. But 
one thing that we talked about on the, the last show and you weren't here is <clears throat> our fall swing coming up has got like Gunnersville, Santee, Chick, and Lake Fork. Mm-hmm. And, and it's in like the primary transition months of October, November. Tell you, that's going to be fun. See, and now from an in, and I was telling this to everybody from an entertainment standpoint, I, obviously Jody's probably with me on this. From an entertainment standpoint, and if you or I were watching a, a fishing show, mm-hmm. we've seen thousands of baskets caught. Right. And that's great and that's fun. But. You and I, and I'm just, I'm throwing you in with me. I, I think <laughs> throw, throw, me this, but, um, throw, throw me in there. Throw me in there. Would enjoy seeing guys like on the fly making adjustments and with 15 rods on their. I know you like this with 15 <laughs> rods on their deck, and they're liable to pick up a buzz bait and catch one. And they're liable to go flip a tree and catch one. Oh, they're liable yeah. to skip a dock and catch one. And that's what you're going to see in these fall tournaments. Obviously, with tournaments too, like Chick or Gunnersville, where. There's obviously grass and things like that that'll play, but there's a lot of different types of structure. There's there's way up the river, there's way down the lake. Right, and, it, and it's less likely for an event to be dominated a, a spot event. Right. It's right. not gonna. It's like gonna St. be. Claire. Yeah, it's gonna be tougher for you know one or two guys to find a spot that's just totally better than anything else on the lake because it is their fish are transitioning. It's such a junk fishing time of the year. But it it is going to be fun to watch. I mean, that's one of my favorite times of year to fish just because, generally speaking, it it is a little tougher. And you have to do everything like Matt just mentioned. I mean, you have to go throw topwater for a little bit, go fish a dock, go fish a lay down, go fish a brush pile. You have to sample a little bit of everything. And and I love that. I, I think that's hands down one of my favorite ways to fish so that is going to be fun to watch yeah when you're in a lake like st Clair, a lot like brian just said you know and, and i and i felt this way in practice i feel like this every time i go up there and i feel like this when i go to okeechobee too excuse me that my hands are somewhat tied from exploring so many options right like you can only do so much up there and you realize that this tournament is going to be one usually one of three or four ways you know typically and yeah. And it's going to be one in one specific area, typically. Right. Um, you know, the last three times I've fished St. Clair, you look at the FLW Tour event three or four years ago. I think you and I both fished that together. Yeah. And uh, Dylan Hayes, Brad Knight, and oh, yeah. Chad, Chad Gatesby were all in the same spot and finished both, all three in the top five. Yeah. Last year, our AOI championship was dominated in one specific tiny spot. Fighter yeah. blew it away. Where that school of big ones Correct. Just happens to be set This up. year, it wasn't one there. It was actually one in the middle of Anchor Bay, which was even weirder. Um, and congratulations again to Bill. I texted him the other day to tell him tell him congrats, awesome job. Uh, but three or four of the top five were in one specific spot and stayed there all four days. Right. Um, fall, the next tournaments we fish, you're not going to happen. There's just no way. Like Brian said, you're not going to go to Gunnersville and sit on one grass mat and catch four days worth of bass to win a tournament. I don't think. It's possible, but the chances are very, very slim. Right. Like, I think you're going to have to bounce around a little more. The SPRO tournament is actually going on the weekend of our tournament, too, which I hear has about 300 boats in it, which is even going to make for a more interesting twist. We're we'll going to have a lot of tracks in the mats. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's funny that you said that because I've always been th- I've already been thinking in my head when you roll up to a, a really good mat that you think was good. Yeah. And you see, you see 68 little, tracks little frog everywhere. tracks through there. <laughs> Looks like somebody took a spoon. But it a, could help you eliminate water too yeah, because if you don't right. see any small holes in the mat, <laughs> that's true. you know they didn't that's get true. you. That's <laughs> true. Um, but yeah, that's that, that, so all those terms are going to be very interesting. Guys are going to have to make a lot of adjustments, move around, change techniques to, to catch five of the right ones each day and it would not surprise me for a guy to win one of those tournaments and say look you know when he when, when they do the top 10 bait pictures and the guy's holding up s- seven rods yeah. instead of a spinning rod with a drop shot and another spinning rod with a ned rig yeah you know what i'm saying so um gonna be interesting gonna be a lot of fun um oh i did see a question a minute ago about a drop shot deal and uh, i want to address that it was a question okay from tim oh, kelly I I said, okay. he said uh you and Brian's best not for a drop shot hook to keep it upright. Well, I don't know if you do the same trick I do. When you tie, I tie a polymer knot, and you take the tag in, and you turn that hook, and you go back through the top of the eye yeah. and pull it down. Yeah, that, that's the same thing I do. That keeps it upright, and that, that cocks it out horizontally to where it makes that bait look natural on your drop shot rig. Yeah. So I hope that maybe you can, can you yeah, explain that, that better than I can. Yeah, that's the same thing. I mean – 
it sounded like you explained it good to, because I know what you're talking right, about. Right, so, so break it down for them. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much, I'm probably going to say the same thing Matt does, or Matt did. So you just in improper English. Well, I don't I don't remember how you said it, so I'm just gonna say it the way I would say it. <laughs> Anyways. <Do that>. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> All right, so you take your drop shot hook. I use a Berkeley Fusion nineteen drop shot hook, tie a Palomar knot to it, and then instead of cutting your tag in off, leave your tag in long, like however long you want your leader to be, and then when you once you cinch the knot down, cinch that Palomar knot down, take your tag in and go back through the eye from the top of the hook. From the top of the hook, that's from the, the key. From the top of the hook. So you're, when you pull down on your tag in, like you, when you put your weight on it, it makes that hook stand out. So I, I think I said the exact same thing Matt did, but I don't know. No, you, so. you reemphasize <laughs> the, the main point of that is after you tie that Palomar knot and you leave that tag in um, – and how long do you like? Let's talk about how long we leave our leaders. And and, I, and mine varies a little bit, but if you're fishing the bottom and you're not fishing real fickle suspended fish, on average, 14 inch, 12 to 14 inches. Yeah, the only time I go to a longer leader on the bottom is if I'm fishing up north around big boulders, because those stupid zebra mussels. If you've got a, you know, a 12 to 14 inch leader and your bait's this high off the bottom, but you're fishing boulders that are three two or three feet tall so the boulder's this tall and your bait's right here when you drag your bait over it your main line's rubbing across those zebra mussels so if you're fishing bigger boulders you need a longer leader so that the tag end goes over the zebra mussels where your weight is instead of the part tied to your hook the you know the line that's connected to the hook that way you don't risk breaking fish off on the zebra mussels or scarring your line up if you're you know you're kind of lazy and don't retie like i do sometimes so. um, <laughs> talk about a mistake i made landing a fish on the <clears> final <throat> day of it's like the it's, it's so random too i, I was a uh, i it was my last cast of the second day of the elite tournament at st Clair. last cast and i'm like two miles maybe a mile and a half from takeoff two miles maybe but it's getting like a washing machine out there it's not rough the wind's not blowing at all but it doesn't matter on st Clair because they talked about it on Bass Live when those big 30 and 40 footers come from 60 different directions. It's like a wave pool out there, and all these big waves are crashing against each other, and you can't you can't get out of it, and you can't run it because it's not consistent. Right. Um, last cast, second day of the tournament, I hook a big one. I mean, it ran super random. I had had one bite there in practice, and I don't go, but it was a big one. Yeah. I was gonna go over there, and I said, I'm gonna flip a drop shot around. I actually cranked it first, didn't get a bite, and I flipped the drop shot out there. And my last set is last cast. I gotta go ahead five minutes to get in it was about a mile and a half two miles and i hook this fish and i'm looking i take him to the back deck and he's, he's taking me around the back deck and he's already jumped twice it's like i mean it's a big one dude it's close to five pounds oh, it's, really? a big so it's, a it's a big one it's a big one this was nowhere near those mega schools i found <laughs> <laughs> and i get it it's skinny but it's like one of them like yeah, 22 inches dude yeah. and i get him up next to the deck and i'm i'm on the back deck on my knees and i'm looking at my gps at the time and I, 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 I kind of panic, and that's the last thing you need to do with oh, a smallmouth. Yeah. And what do I? And every fish I landed the whole tournament that I had to actually, which wasn't very many. Where that's I, a I difficult situation, look. though. So I'm looking at my GPS, and when I do, I'm like, I got to get this fish and call like super fast. Yeah. So I, and I'm getting him up there, and he's still green, dude. He's going nuts, and I'm like, screw it. And I grab the line. Oh yeah. What do you think happened? Oh, he broke you off. Yep. I mean, like, and dude, I am so thankful that I did not have a marshal with me <laughs> when that <laughs> happened because I knew exactly what I was doing wrong when I grabbed that line. Denny Breyer said this, and this is my whole point of this story. He said this like 25 years ago, like when I was still, like, you know, crapping yellow, <laughs> and he, trying to learn, trying to learn how to fish. Yeah, and, and he said one thing you don't do. And Denny always fished bass, and they didn't allow nets. When you're trying to land a fish, is what? Grab the line. Yeah, you don't ever grab the line. Never grab the line. Never grab the line. So, like, 99.9% of the fish I've landed since I moved to bass, uh, I never grabbed the line. Well, I grabbed the line, and the fish broke me off. Like, sewing thread, dude. Yeah. Like, it wasn't oh, yeah. even, well, like, we're using eight-pound leader. Eight-pound eight leader. And, and you uh, probably hadn't retired it in a while. It's the end of the day. I wasn't even thinking I was going to get a bite there. <laughs> 
but that was a mistake too. You always have to think you're going to so get. You got right. a lot of things going against you. Yeah, and and but I looked at the GPS and I said I got to go. So I was like I got to get this fish in. And I grabbed the line and dude, you could have snapped your fingers and the line broke. I and mean, he made just a little run under the boat. And the line yeah. broke. And uh, I said, if, but I won't even. I, I will absolutely not repeat what I said on the show. But um, people in Metro Park probably heard me. I was two miles away. So uh, how, was, how much time did you have when you made it? About a minute. About a minute. Okay, minute, so it would have been tied either way. Like, oh, I already knew which one I had to call. Like, I was going to toss one and throw him yeah. in, you know. Um, but I had about a minute and a half when I checked Well, in. technically, y'all got a rule that says you can't make a cast with five in the live well. Could you run in and call? No. Well, yeah, I don't think you can move either. Okay. I'd have to. That's a good question. Throw him in the live <laughs> well and call when you check in. Yeah, like be uh, out and in the way. I don't in think so. Because <laughs> uh, I don't think. I think moving is the same as not. Because, yeah, that's. that's yeah, true. here's why I know that. Because Scott Martin actually in a tournament one time. This is a pretty cool story. Um, he was at he was at Champlain and there were some smallmouth on the bed, some big ones, and. He caught one, and I think the story was um, that he caught one that helped him at the time, and he caught up to like 17 and a half pounds. Yeah. And he ran to another spot, and he caught a large mouth, and it called out that small mouth that he caught off the bed. Oh, he took it back to the bed. He wa- he actually called ah. Bill Taylor, if I'm not mistaken, to wonder if he could put the six fish in his live well and run back and turn that smallmouth loose on its bed because you and I both know yeah. it would have been there the yeah, next day oh, yeah. and probably he could have caught it. If anybody could have, it would have been Scott. Um, and, the, and that was not allowed. Right. So I'm assuming that would be the same, yeah, same concept. That makes sense. Uh, so there's a few questions, I think, on here. Um, Brian Clary asked about uh, Bass showing the weigh-ins – on ESPN, I'm not sure how that scheduling works on ESPN two with Bass, but I know I know that weigh-ins are not shown on the live coverage on ESPN two. They are shown always on Bassmaster.com. So when that live coverage goes off ESPN two, you've got to go over to Bassmaster.com in order to see the weigh-ins. That's just the way it is. Um, I don't know why that is, Bryant, and I'm sorry I can't answer that. Uh, Bryant Clary said, "Awesome job, Jeff. You are doing a phenomenal job, Jeff. It's it's a lot of hard work sitting here, so I really appreciate that, Bryant." <laughs> uh, See, people people take notice of the skill. We haven't had a technical issue in a long time. We have Why do you even say that? Maybe we need to have (laughs) one. That's like grabbing a fishing line, dude. You just don't do it. (laughs) That's not funny, Jeff. That's awesome. It's not funny. You know, (laughs) that fish, like, cost me, like, five points. Absolutely zero money, but five points. That's a lot. Uh, It could be. It could be. It could be a lot. Trust me, that's crossed my mind, too. (laughs) Um, All right, so... Hey, another thing, getting off the smallmouth, Thank I caught goodness. my very first white marlin over the time. Oh, yeah, we didn't talk about your marlin trip. Yes. So, we, Brian caught his first white marlin. I did. And which, I, how big was it? You told me roughly. But. It was 60, 65 pound range. It's a pretty good one for me, I thought. Yeah, that is a good one. <laughs> that is absolutely a good one. Um, I've That's never caught a white stuff. marlin. That's I've never caught a blue stuff. marlin. Um, but very that is, fun stuff. Now, y'all hooked a blue, didn't you? We caught a blue. Y'all did catch a blue. Yeah. And it was small. Uh, uh, yeah, it was uh, probably 350-pound range. That's just a big one to me. But that, I know it's To me, it was huge. <laughs> like, when it come up to the back of the boat and ate the bait, like, to me, it was 4,000 pounds. I don't know. It looked like it was 17 foot long, this big around, and it was eating everything 17 inside. feet long? It looked huge. That's pretty big. It's huge. Uh, all right, let's address a couple more. I don't know what, what time we got, Jeff. John Long says he misses me we highlighting got comments. got 15 minutes. So I highlighted his comment. 15. How about that? Bruce Camp <laughs> said, sound's not working, Jeff. He's joking, by the way. Um, let's, let's jump on some questions. We still got some time. Oh, here's a very technical question. All right, go ahead, Brian. Address, get on that one. A lot of different, a lot of questions in one. All right. Cole Allen says... That's the one I was going after. <laughs> Perfect. What gives you the confidence to stay on a spot for a multiple-day tournament? Let's break it down. Let's start like with that Marlins. I'm going to say there's like five questions. Yeah, let's, let's just start with that one. All right. you want, we going to address them all? Yeah, we might as well. All right. Jeff, you not get the black shirt memo tonight? What happened? Huh? <laughs> no. no. We're wearing the same shorts, too. Are we? I should probably God, should. we are. I mean, accidentally, but we are. Is that a joke? No, we actually have the same we shorts actually on. Actually, have the same shorts. Ridiculous. It's like grabbing like not these same it's like exact a pair line. of shorts. They're <laughs> similar. You done with that? It's like grabbing a fishing line. <laughs> <laughs> you done with that? 
Uh, Not really. All right, so you want to jump on that first one? Yes, I will start with the first one. All right, so what gives me confidence to stay on a spot for a multiple-day tournament? A lot of it depends on what I'm trying to accomplish and where I'm at in the tournament. So, it, And the type of spot it is. And I'm sure we'll touch on a little bit more of it when we answer some of the other questions in the question. But um, to me, it, it's the number of bites and the quality of fish. I mean, that's that's the biggest thing. If it's a spot that – or say it's a tough event and it's a spot I know I can catch a limit on and do well in the tournament – and I know it's a tough event, I'll stay there until I'm happy with what I've got. And if it's a, a spot that you know you're not going to get many bites, but they're going to be big ones, you know, once I've got a limit, I may go park on that spot and fish the rest of the day to try to catch that one or two kickers that you need to put you at the top of the leaderboard. So there's a lot of different variables you can factor in on that. But that's the kind of the two main scenarios. <laughs> What's going on? Hunt Josh White, they're a hundred percent not cargo shorts, by the way. Everybody thought I might they, be hey, wearing they are. They got pockets all over them. Look at there. There's a zip right there. Those are not these are not cargo oh, shorts. Oh yeah. If it's got pockets other than one you stick your hand in, Dude, it's I ain't cargo wore, shorts. I ain't right cargo yet. shorts since middle school. These are well, not you're cargo wearing them shorts. Now, buddy. <laughs> Those are pretty close to cargo <laughs> shorts. You're they're wearing not cargo them now. shorts. Oh yeah. It's got a pocket you can put cargo in. Can we go to part B the definition of the, of of the question? Bam. What, yes, sir. What do you need to see in practice <laughs> to be on the winning fish or have enough? I need to see where I'm standing after the first day. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I say that is because every time you think you're on you're on them good, the guys just hurt your feelings. Yeah. These guys just hurt I've, your feelings. I tell you, of all the tournaments I've won, I have never thought I was going to win that event. There have been several events where I thought I would do – I'm not going to say I thought I was going to win, but I thought I could do well in that ended up bombs. Because most of the time when you win a multi-day tournament, you find fish progressively throughout the event. Yep, you start to understand what's going yeah, on Yeah, most more of the more. time that's the way it works. I'm not going to say all the time because obviously there's plenty of tournaments every year if it's won off of, you know, one place or something like that. I mean, case in point, St. Clair event or – Something like, you know, where a guy found one place and they're going to sit there and win. Justin Lucas at the yeah. FLW uh, Super Tournament yeah. at Lake Erie. Yeah, and Justin did the same thing at Sturgeon Bay. So He was one spot the whole time there? I don't know if he was one, but... I don't know if he was either. I just said He that. probably caught enough off of one spot to beat me very badly. <laughs> so, we're just going to go with it was one spot. <laughs> um, so, that that's the thing about it is most of the time in a multi-day tournament you have to progressively figure out more throughout the course of the event and stay pretty much one step ahead of the fish or one step a, ahead of the co competition so you can progressively get better and better. And, Cole, the last part of your question where he says, I hear a lot about running out of fish or having enough. How many spots do you typically have for a tournament? <laughs> we hate to sound like a broken record kind of answering all your questions with 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 one consistent theme, and that is that – there really isn't a, a, a correct answer to that question because it, it varies by lake, it varies by season, it varies day to day. Um, sometimes, like Brian said, it could, it could be one spot. Sometimes it takes 50. Sometimes it takes one bait. Sometimes it takes 12. Um, you just have to be able to adjust day to day in order to carry yourself through a multiple-day tournament. Um, very rarely do you see something take place like St. Clair or like Erie, yeah. um, where a guy can sit in one particular area and catch, you know, 80 pounds of smallmouth and win the tournament. Um, most of the time in all the other events that you see, it's it's multiple techniques, uh, sometimes even multiple patterns, um, and always multiple locations. But um, that's, the, that's the cool thing about having multiple-day yeah. events. You know, a lot of guys can go and out. And you can never have too many locations. But yeah, and, and, yeah. yeah, and that's exactly 100% correct. We practice 12, 13, 14-hour days on the water during our official practice days. And when you think you're, you've had a good practice after day two of practice, and you're like, don't ever let your foot off the gas. Yeah. Because I'll promise you somebody's out there working longer and harder than you are. And if that's the case and they find one more spot that produces one more bite, you end up losing the tournament by an ounce because of that. Yeah. And um, it doesn't matter how good you catch them and what you find. 
you you'll never find the best spot on the lake. Nobody can find it. I, I think it's unobtainable. That's a good point. That's I a mean, good point. It's, it's unobtainable. It, uh, it cannot be found because it just can't be found. I don't know how to explain. It. <laughs> Brian Clary said, "Where are you in the points?" I'm not sure who he's talking to. Uh, well, my we season's can, over, so where did you end up in the points? I think 15th. All right, uh, I'm sitting in 12th, so that answers for both of us. All right. <laughs> um, I dropped. Uh, Ryan Sauer says, "What does my shirt say?" It says, "Kilik." Like there we go. <laughs> it is actually a sportsman's warehouse brand of clothing. They got some awesome camouflage <laughs> and stuff like that. Awesome. They got just a whole line of the Killeek brand at Sportsman's Warehouse. It's it's good stuff. Uh, what's your what's your guys' takes on spots this time of year? Do they migrate like the large mouth to the bank and creeks, or do they mainly stay out deep? I know Norman's got both. I mean, they got deep spots and shallow spots. Yeah. Um, other lakes probably just primarily have de- well no lanier's got yeah, both. Nah, you, got both any lake in the southeast you're gonna have shallow and deep fish all year long yep no matter what the species same up north i mean you look yeah. at st Clair, you look at erie <clears throat> i mean there's deep smallmouth, and that's kind of how it was dominated but and there was shallow smallmouth. yep that is I mean, very plenty true. of shallow smallmouth. um and jo- ricky gammons wants to know about the mercury's enjoying them ricky they're uh they're strong motors their uh mid-range is pretty impressive uh Overall, been real pleased with mine so far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dan. Uh, I think I think he pretty much. Agrees. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, <clears throat> um, <laughs> how many fish do you generally? This is from Jim Hill. Do you generally <laughs> catch <laughs> on a technique to make you call it a pattern, and how long do you stick to that pattern? Um, I'm going to go with two. A minimum of two? Until they quit biting. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's a Brian answer. That's a smoke answer. What? Until till I stop it's catching. It's three. It's three. So you think you can f- catch two on a fluke? Three is a pattern? Not on the, right, the bait me, fluke. Fix hit you with some knowledge. <laughs> Ooh. He's fixed to <laughs> drop the bombs. Everybody prepare themselves. This is the way I the, – the, the, it's three. And I don't remember where I heard this or who told me this. I just had days I've uh, you've said this on the show before, but I still don't remember what it yeah. how it ends up. It's so. One bite could be an accident. Two bites could be a coincidence. Three is a pattern. It's three. One bite accident. Is it an accident? Yeah. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> could be. Or it could, could be or a pattern. Could be the other way, or it could be another way. Or it could I, be on say. the way to a coincidence, which is two First bites. bite could be a coincidence, and the second one could be an accident. No. First right. one's always accident. That's the way, <laughs> that's the way I was told. I don't know. Who told you that? I have no idea, but it was a long, long time ago. So you're three fish in. How long do you stay? Three's enough. Then I leave. Gotcha. Oh, you'll stay on the spot till you get three bites, even if the first two. If are five I pounders. think they're there, yeah. so you're gonna make it three depends casts, on the type of spot. You're gonna make three casts, catch three five pounders, and then leave. It depends on the spot. Like it depends on what it is, like um, and what I see on my graph. You know, if it's a say a a brush pile or something on a dock, and I get one bite, I'm gonna probably try to get another one because that could be an accident. <laughs> but if i mark a school of fish on my hummingbird island over a point and it looks like there's 20 of them down there and i catch one and it's a five pounder i probably won't throw again because i already seen them and i know there's 20 of them down there hmm. so charlie i was going to tell you congratulations till you uh, attributed most of your success to brian's tips instead of my tips Dude, whoa, where's this no, at on no congrats charlie said he said thanks for all the great tips guys i was able to win his aoy over the weekend in his first season fishing with his club I said sorry matt but i have to give most of the credit to brian and his jig fishing tricks hey hey congratulations to you charlie seriously yes um, congratulations uh, <laughs> and <this is> <laughs> Clarence <laughs> said, he said all his hey we got a deer we got a deer hunting question am no, i allowed, am i allowed, no, am I allowed no. to answer Not i'm just trying i'm trying to help the second it's an early season question. Well, the season ain't started yet, so you can wait. It's really close. I no, was tra- I was not. checking trail cameras today, by the away. way, Ryan. Two weeks is close. 
Are y'all ready to start hearing about deer hunting? We're not gonna we're not gonna change the the, the whole topic. <clears throat> Smallmouth are still. I mean, you're not even gonna get to hunt this year. Or still, I'm you're gonna, get, gonna fish all fall. I'm leaving September fourth to go to Kentucky for the early velvet season. Oh God! And <laughs> he just said. He just said, do, do I have any early season tips for whitetail deer? I have 100%. It's all about food. You have got to find their primary food source. Max scent. That flat worm. Max scent <laughs> flat worm. Hang one in a tree. They'll it's, come running. <laughs> oh, me. Do you, um, do you not give them their food source? Well, I mean, we can in North Carolina. We can bait like crazy, and I recommend anybody that does that, and anybody that's against it, probably against it because their state doesn't allow them to do it. Uh, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just speaking the truth. Um, but Ryan, like you, using corn is the best thing ever for deer hunting. No doubt, no doubt, like especially bow hunters. It's helped North Carolina deer. We've got a bigger herd and bigger deer than we've, I think we've ever had in North Carolina. We have a, we have a lot bigger deer now than we did. Every year I see improvements in, in yeah. the overall quality of our herd, and, and it's, uh, I mean, I attribute that to a lot of different factors, but, um, Ryan, I'm not sure exactly where you hunt, but, man, it's all about the food. I mean, early season, I know Kentucky's a lot of agriculture where we're going, a lot of bean fields, things like that are going to be, um, you know, the, around here this time of year, uh, or it's usually around October 1st or so, I'm already seeing a bunch of white oaks on the ground. Have you seen that? I'm seeing a bunch of white oaks on the ground. Now, they're green, I don't know. like almost chartreuse. Pecans. But, Pecans? Yeah. Do you say pecan? Yeah, pecan. You don't say pecan? No. North Carolina is pecan. I love it. I hope I hope my wife's listening right now. What do you call it? Pecan. Exactly. It's a pecan. They all call it pecans. Um, they tell me that I, that's Yankees say from. pecan and Southerners say pecan. It's pecan from where I come from, for sure. Pecan. It's what, see? You're kind of a city slicker, though. From, you're from the city. No, nah, it depends on how you. It, it's city all slicker. in the. Did you just the... call me a city slicker? <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, maybe a little um, bit. It's Mark like McGuire asks, Am I going to fish the Toyota Series on Norman? <laughs> yes, I am. I'm already signed up. When is that tournament? It is the first week of October. First week of October. First week of October. I'm signed up. I'm on the waiting list. So get me in, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> do you need a guaranteed co angler? You could get Jeff. Ooh, Jeff, do well, it. You had never fished a professional bass. We could start a GoFundMe for Jeff's co angler. I'm now fishing either. a professional bass. I know, it's a joke. Jeff, a joke. high five. We would never do that. We're going for the victory. Well, Jeff's going to sign up as a co angler for me. Are Mark. you really? Yeah. Do you sure y'all don't have a redfish tournament that weekend? September, November, December. Heck yeah. Are you seriously going to do it? Yeah, this is going to be awesome. Can we make yeah, a jersey? Like can we please make you a jersey? Absolutely. I can you wear one of mine? You can nope. wear one of no. mine. <laughs> We're going to put LTF hashtag rape in nature. That's all my jersey is going to say is rape in nature. No, it's going to say I'm about to rape nature. <laughs> and on the back, no points for second place. No point. First, second is first loser. How about it? You're in for real? Does Jeff own his own equipment to fish with? Yes. I'll have you know, I've got Look, probably there's... 30 rods there and another 50 in the house. Yeah, plenty of rods. Ask least. him where they came and from. And I got baits, so we're he's good. Just a shaky head is all you need, Jeff, and you'll catch him. I got you covered. Got me covered. Pa Mark said pay him in. Whoa, no, he's no. In. He's going to pay in. He's just going to sign up. Agreed, Link Mark. I think Thrift should pay his <laughs> entry fee. If he's the reason that Brian's going to get in the tournament, I think that's the least Smoke can do is pay him. Okay. In. Jeff, will you practice with me? Yes. All right. What's the entry fee, Mark? That's how much it'll be a day to practice. I'm paying my way. <laughs> no. I'm he's kidding. charging you a guide fee. Did you hear that? <laughs> LTF will sponsor you, Jeff. Hey, that's what we should if do. If I don't pay, he'll want to keep all the money. Huh? That's what you sh you should pay Ooh. him in, and he'll split his winnings with you. Oh, that ain't a bad idea. <laughs> we're gonna donate hey, our winnings. Jeff's we're, donate, been on, we're gonna donate our winnings to me and a Jeff's cause. been on. What are we Norman what, together? What can we win? We crushed him on Norman last. Dude, time you can win yes. a boat. First place on the Coanger side, I think, is a boat, isn't it? You got to have. You have to run a, on a Phoenix, I think. Well, go or, buy a Phoenix. I'll go buy a Phoenix. <laughs> Then we're gonna this is going to be a high dollar entry fee, Jeff. We're going to donate our winnings to, uh, to something. 550 It's $550. There you go. 550 Jeff, Jeff in. You're, you're in. Jeff's in. Jeff's in. He'll call in tomorrow. Thank 97 you packs of, of that, stingers Mark. and Good a job. shaky head is all Jeff needs, is what Morgan said. <laughs> put, put, uh, 
put city slicker. Last on the back time of we was jersey. there, Jeff smoked them Perfect. on the what that the Demiki spinner bait, the tot spinner bait. Caught a few on that. Yeah, that's what you were catching most of them on then. And the swim, the Mickey swim too, bait. Though. Yeah, we caught a bunch we of killed them. Killed them around those dogs. Yes, we did. <laughs> Bruce, <laughs> Bruce said pecan is what Grandma sits beside the bed. I like it. <laughs> I've never heard that before. I like it. Um, Jeff, so tell us your pre-tournament strategy here. Um, Me? Let's talk. Actually, even better. <laughs> after after that tournament, we're not. It ain't gonna be like I'll be. I'll still be gone. Um, but. We're going to do a post-tournament report, and it's going to be... Oh, no, you get a boat regardless, Jeff, if you win. Co-anger gets a boat regardless. Perfect. Perfect. What are you going to do with that boat? We're going to donate whatever we win to charity. Y'all heard it here? We're going to sell the... Well, it's kind of hard to donate a boat to charity. We'll sell it and donate <laughs> the money. Or if we... I don't know. We'll let you guys decide what we do with the winnings. How about that? Chris Smith to donate the winnings to the Lake Norman restocking program <laughs> since, since they got to be raping right nature. <laughs> um, you do know that you're randomly paired with somebody for the event, though, even if you get to practice with smoke over here. That's fine. Okay. he He's going to bring it either way. He might kick you a few extra bucks if you could, like, whack your pro in the back of the head when he hooks one <laughs> or something. <laughs> oh, wait, tournament director's watching. I better shut up. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> Don't this throw a flat worm at Lake Norman. You don't need the flat worms at Lake Norman. No. Um, Jeff will be – he'll be ready. He's going to practice with me. Todd's right. A little pulse jig might actually catch him at Norman that time of year. Yes, it will. And I know a guy – I know a guy could get you – you'll have – You look, if you don't catch him, it's not anybody's fault but your own because you're going to have all the best equipment, all the best <laughs> baits, all the best techniques, all the best knowledge, and you're even going to have Brian spots so you can tell your pro to go to it whoa, whoa, you're struggling. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not doing <laughs> that. <laughs> Boy, that might actually be against the rules. So. I'm not doing that. Um, that Y'all need to shoot some video when y'all are out there practicing. Oh, for yeah, real. We're, we're going to have fun with that. Just make sure you don't show his spots for real, though. He'll probably c- cut your throat in your sleep. Um, just saying. Uh, I, I, it's been so long since I've been to Norman. I don't know if my spots are any good anymore. I'm gonna have to go find new spots. You always say that. And it's you, true. Then you go win. And, it's true. All right. Predictions on that tournament because it's a weird time of year on Norman. Uh, last time you fished a tournament? No, that was in September. That Invitational. Yeah, but that was four years ago. Thirteen a day wins it. Fourteen. A day. I hadn't been on it a long time. But history, yeah. Thirteen. A Thirteen day wins a day. It. So, 12, Jeff, 12 a day if you could just catch five it. keepers a day, you will do really well in that tournament. Is it five or three for co-anglers in that? Five. Five, okay. It's bass opens that are three, right? Or were? No idea. Um, one of them's three I, for co-anglers. I can't remember which one. So, you just need to figure out a way to get bites. And this guy can tell you how to get bites. Um, we won't talk about it too much on the air because we want to keep your secrets safe. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> But we're going to work on that jersey in the meantime. Dude, this no is faith. Be, this is going to be awesome. No faith. I get to design the jersey. We might actually – I tell you, <laughs> we, we should ask for submissions for jersey ideas, like some mock-ups. <laughs> I'm, not wearing, I'm, not wearing I'm way more excited about this than you are yeah. right now. It's going to be a jersey of some sort. It may just be a, a wife beater with spray paint something on it, but it's going to be a jersey. Can we do something like Matthew Robertson – had we gonna get you like like he wore at the classic you know he had the leopard print like king's robe on <laughs> and he had that flat bill on him hat that he's so famous for wearing you know what i'm talking about yes okay no we're not doing that why you got it look man it's all about if you don't catch them <laughs> if you don't catch them they have to remember you so you you've got you've got you've got oh, two options I you either go to talking junk or who? Scott Hammer, bring it three if He can't even spell your name right, so. That's very true. W- <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> um, bring it. He said bring it. Man, I, you know, Scott is a heck of a stick on Norman. He's the surgeon. I learned just a long time him. ago not to be taunting this guy over here. I mean, I just don't <laughs> I just do not do it. I mean, it's just something I don't do. Um Hamrick's bringing the smack train thrift. <laughs> I wonder how many that. I, mean, I wonder how many locals that tournament will consist of. Oh, it's gonna have a bunch of locals. It's gonna be like a. That's gonna be a hard tournament to win. No doubt. No doubt. It's gonna be a. a 
it's gonna be an interesting event. I'm I'm gonna be I don't know where I'm gonna be somewhere in the south, but uh. I'm gonna have to follow follow along on that one. That's gonna be fun. <laughs> it and is gonna especially be especially this guy, Tiger King. Tiger King. Nah, it's Jersey. played out. It's played out. Not happening. It's okay. played out. We it's, watched. We got to be original. It's my wife be and I original. watched the first episode, uh, season one. I've never watched one. episode one. No, this is not Tiger King of of Yellowstone last night. I you watch watched what watched now? Which season? Uh, the first episode of Yellowstone. The very first. First season. First episode. Yes. First one I have watched. Um, and I saw a post that was kind of disappointing last night from a friend of mine, Jason Johnson, that he was talking about the ending being very disappointing, and and other people were agreeing with him. And I hated to see that post because it's, um, dis- it's, no, no, it it's, it's not disappointing. Uh, don't now, don't spoil it for me. It's not. It's disappointing because they have to wait a year to see what happens. That's why it's disappointing. Who has to wait a year for the next season to come out? Oh, the finale was the so. One. There's That's three why. seasons, right? Yeah, and there's a season four coming. Yes, oh. but it's like next summer. That's why it's disappointing. Oh, well, by, by the time was, I get there, it will be next summer yeah, probably. Not because it was bad. <laughs> um, we live in the country where we don't even have internet access, so we figured out a way to hook Emily's phone up. We got a little adapter cable, and we run it to our TV, oh, yeah. and we play it through her phone, and we buy it. We're buying it like per episode for like $2. <laughs> anyway, mm-hmm. we're <laughs> – what? See, City Slicker, man. He's like you weird people. That oh, we don't have sticks. it either. Y'all don't have internet either. Huh. Um <laughs> I know, Mark. I would. It's love not to, my fault. It's I would love to fish that tournament. Fault. I, I would love to fish that tournament at Norman. Um, I try we have to get internet. Back to back. I know my wife. My Emily's been I working seen on her it. Post that was a yeah, good post. She's been working on it. Uh, she's been hard at it the last couple months, man. And it's just it's well, frustrating. Tell her That's to a, include me and Allie. We'll we'll get on there and start doing some training. Man, it's it's eight eight minutes past it. trivia question, right? Is it really? God, mm-hmm. it's late. Uh, well. If time flies when you're having fun, but to address Mark's comment, I would love to fish that Norman tournament, and uh, I have back to back to back elite events, and I will be gone the entire time y'all are fishing on Norman. But I will be watching that event mainly following this guy. I'll have the full <laughs> camera crew out, so the, it'll be live. You, oh yeah, you gonna have a chase boat? Yeah, you're gonna look at your pro. You're gonna draw somebody like uh, like Hamrick the first day, and they'll be like, "Don't worry, man. They're just they're here for me." So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that would be so awesome. Oh, uh, dude, I'm so excited about that. Now you better you better hold true. You I, I that that'll be awesome, dude. That'd be a great way. That'll be a great way to break into your first bass tournament, the bass tournament scene. That'd be a oh, fun yeah. tournament. Yeah, it's I'm gonna going be straight fun. straight tour next year then. Straight tour as yeah. co pro or like pro I don't pro. Know. I might whatever. Just depends. <laughs> just depends. When you win the boat, you know <laughs> you should if you win that boat, you should just use that boat and just What kind of boat is it? It's, it's a, a bass boat. Phoenix. I Does it know, matter? I don't know what size. It'll be a good one. I just want to know what we're giving away. Mm. <laughs> we could do, on the front, we'll do a two-sided jersey. So on Get the front, drone. it'll be. I have be a drone. I've Ryan, got GoPros. Everybody's doing right. all this stuff again. I now got you, that's what you should do. You should. You, I don't think you can I'm drive sure, the drone. I'm aware of that. I'm, should, I'm have one of those drones that follow you around. You should pack your drone in your tackle bag. <laughs> It wouldn't fit. And fly out over yourself while you're fishing. I, it's, it's, I got a little thing that just follow me around. I'm just keep you replacing get, batteries. You get one of those little red, those multicolored, rainbow-colored hats that have the little propeller on the top, too. You know, that spins with the wind. Yeah, I have one of those. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Who I, does it? Who does it? At the house. And a Wonder Bread-colored jersey, Ryan Sauer said. Exactly. Just like Ricky Bobby. Um, oh, Lord. So we obviously need to get to the trivia question because it's – what 12 minutes past or something uh it'd be 10 minutes past but we can sit here all night <laughs> yep i, like I got it. to get the boys to bed while he's got school tomorrow already getting questions 518 I mean, pro with a 115 mercury four stroke there you go perfect perfect it's all you need um all right y'all appreciate everybody tuning in had a couple hundred viewers tonight and uh as always it feels good to be back it man. does it absolutely it does good to be back um, we're going to end the night with a trivia question. Got a giveaway sponsored by Angler's Choice, our presenting sponsor, who's giving away a shirt and hat tonight uh, to the lucky winner. So here we go. Uh, pretty cool question. I, I, I will say my, so myself. Pretty cool uh, backstory this, this is on this. Cool. But, um, Bill Wadler, uh, congrats again to Bill. Um, buddy of mine, a fellow Elite Series pro, won his first event at Lake St. Clair this past week. And if you followed along, it was a pretty impressive win. Uh, only Bill's second top ten is Elite Pro, but his but he's he's had a win, so he's batting fifty percent when he makes that's the top pretty 10, which solid. Kind of scary. That's pretty um, solid. So, Bill, if anybody noticed, he had earbuds in while he was fishing uh, on Bass Live or ESPN Two or however you follow the live coverage. Um, 
was listening to a specific song uh, while he was fishing, and I want to know from y'all uh, the band and the name of that song. Uh, what? This is going to take a minute. It's not going to take a minute. <laughs> it's really not going to take a minute. Um, it, I need to know the, the, the name of the... I got a winner. The, oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Just there like, you go. going to take a minute. Oh, I already got a winner. <laughs> Andrew, that was on uh, Andrew Alexander. Andrew Alexander. He's on top of it. That All was awesome. Over Red it. letters by Crowder. Red letters he by Crowder. He just won twice because he answered it twice. Uh, <laughs> Christian rock band Crowder and and I uh, did a little research on this uh, on this song when Bill talked about it on stage. Very cool story. I encourage everybody to check that check that song out. And uh, you know it it basically uh, it's about part of the scripture that was actually written and read back in the day. Yeah. Um, and it stood out to people more, and people were able to actually, um, I guess, adhere to what they were actually reading because of the colors of the letters. And um, very cool, very cool backstory. But uh, Bill's <laughs> idea behind it, Bill's a, a, a fellow Christian and, and a great guy, uh, but those smallmouth up north can be really crazy, really wild, and, and get you – Gets you really impatient really fast when you hook one. <laughs> and he would actually listen to that song while he was fighting those big giant four and five pounders at St. Clair to keep him calm and in that's, the right mindset brilliant. to slow himself I down mean, and brilliant. leave it in God's hands and let it play out the way it was going to play out. And a very cool story, but pretty awesome. Uh, still getting correct answers, guys. We already have a winner, unfortunately. Yeah, but, hey, and, uh, and Andrew <laughs> just said he's buying a boat from Angler's Choice Saturday in Martinsville. Congratulations. Con- congrats, Andrew. Andrew. Uh, we'll be the proud new Tell owner. Tell everybody of a, we said hey up there. Yep, of a new boat. Uh, and he's going up to the Martinsville location to pick a new one up from Angler's Choice. Uh, they all, all Great people. Always have the best deals around. And three locations. Don't forget, Spindale, North Carolina, Lexington, North Carolina, and Martinsville, Virginia. But congrats, Andrew. Send us the size shirt that you wear and your shipping information, and we'll get that uh, Angler's Choice hat and shirt sent out to you. Um, we'll be back next Tuesday. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I didn't want to speak without knowing for sure, but I was pretty sure the red letters in the Bible are the words that were spoken by Jesus. Right, not God, yeah. by Jesus. Yeah, in, yep. the, in the New Testament. But they were put in red to be... Yeah, to to let people know that was actually Jesus speaking. Yep. Um and his, his words. I actually had this the 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 uh um kind of the whole background of it pulled up on my phone earlier and I'm I, I won't I won't read through all that. I just challenge each and every one of you to go check that out cuz it is a really cool deal. Um now I lost my Facebook feed. There we go. <laughs> um Oh, I didn't know that, Clarence. He said he was even singing it some. So that's uh that's, oh, pretty, that's cool. pretty cool. Um Are we having a show next week? <laughs> I mean, well, I'm we hadn't talked about it yet. I just it popped um, in my head. I just said well, that. Well, judging by ago. the comment about 13 seconds ago, <laughs> when Matt said we'll be back for a show <laughs> next week, some I didn't things, hear that. Some yeah. things I must have been doing something else. So, yep, that's I okay. Don't know what, yeah, I don't know what. So you're I doing. think we're having a show next. I'm week? probably reading the comments. My wife yeah. fusses at me. For we that. got the special. You know, we talked about it earlier. Oh special yeah, guests. we got special guests. <laughs> Duh. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Getting old, thrift. I know, dude. I'm forgetting stuff that I used to remember. I really am. Allison even called me out on it a time or two. Like what? Just random stuff, like stuff that I used to, it would be something I would remember. I'll forget. Like nothing long-term, like short-term. Not remember. like to go to the bathroom or anything like that. <laughs> okay. okay. All right, we're good then. So no, far. No, not like short-term stuff, like I can't find my car keys, stuff like that. Yeah, just normal stuff. Normal stuff. Yeah, that's what I said. All right. You want to sign us out? <laughs> well, we'll be back next Tuesday with a special guest. Everybody be sure to tune in. Special guest. Brian's going to sign us out tonight, guys. Thanks for I, joining I in. I signed us in. So I got to sign us out? You got to sign us out. All right. Well, when you, we can't. I always sign us out when you sign us in. When we can't go fishing, which is next Tuesday at 7 o'clock, we will be right here in the studio with a special <laughs> guest and a special giveaway to talk fishing. See y'all then. Thank you for listening to Let's Talk Fish. Visit our private Facebook group to continue the conversation, post your questions, and talk with other fellow anglers at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Let's Talk Fish. Follow us on Instagram at Let's Talk Fish Official and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more exclusive content. Join us again next episode for more actionable tips, tactics, and techniques directly from the pros. And remember, when we can't go fishing, we're going to sit right here and talk fish.